Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to be continuing part three of teaching t Nile Ableton Live. And uh, I kind of wanted to start this video by asking t Nile what her musical background is because she has a, uh, a background in music, singer-songwriter, yeah. uh, performer, yeah. things I'm, like that. I'm a beginner with Ableton. Uh, but I'm not a beginner with music. Um, I've been playing music since I was a kid, and I grew up in a musical family. Um, but I've always, I did study music. Uh, I went to music school. Um, but I always kind of came back to my musical roots, which was a much more organic way of coming at music. I don't really rely on my musical theory training that much mm -hmm. because for me, music is more of an intuitive process. Yeah. Um, and that might be partly why I struggle a little bit with um, using a digital audio workstation such a as doll. Ableton. A DAW. A DAW. Because, yeah, it's, uh, it is sort of methodical and using the part of my brain that I avoid using with music. But I have to say that so far, I'm really enjoying this process. Thanks to you, you're mm -hmm. making it quite fun. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to take all of my musical ideas and be able to put them forward without having to always have an intermediary. I've always mm -hmm. had to have um, an engineer that I work with, um, a co-producer, and that's been great, and I will continue mm -hmm. to do that. But it's, especially for demoing and songwriting, um, I mm -hmm. just love the idea of being able to have an idea and then just make it work and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so this is very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. That I was, kind that of was, rambled. That was a good answer. I no. like it. Um, let's start... What you're saying is it's, uh, it's repetition. Repetition is good. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So let's get some drums in there. Sure. And I don't even need to explain. Oh. So we want to... Oh. Drums. So, sorry, 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 sorry. I need to get... There you go. Oh, great. We're drums. Live. Drums. And you like a particular... I do. Type. I found a kit that I really like. It like. reminds me of... It reminds me of... An album I love, which is Nelly Furtado's album that I can't remember the name of it, but it's her big breakout album that was really, really kind of more pop than her earlier stuff. Mm -hmm. And she worked with, was it Dr. Dre? I don't know. Someone tell me what it is. I can't remember, but it's a great album. Was it's it got the one where she's like the you bird. You don't mean nothing at all to me. That oh. one. It's right after she had kids. Like, oh. I think it's called Promiscuous. The album is called Promiscuous. Oh. And she just had had a baby and she's like, oh, like mama bear or something. But it's a great record. And anyway, this drum kit reminds me of that record. Drag and drop it in. Okay, drag and drop. Boom. So, uh, yeah, let's... Um, you want to program something in or do you want to uh, write something? Or I mean, do you want to like record a jamming thing? You can do capture. You can uh, draw it in. Well, yesterday we did playing it, which is Blame. the most intuitive way for me because yeah. that's what I do. I play music. Mm -hmm. But I'd love you to show me yep. what the other way is because I've seen mm -hmm. you draw stuff in. I've never yeah. done that myself. How do you draw I'm stuff in? I'm a drawer in? because I don't know how to. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to uh, double click to create a new MIDI clip okay. at the top. Okay, double click. Is it here? No, it's uh, a, little, a little bit below. Here. Uh, anywhere, yeah, any of those squares. Oh, right, yeah. so you, now you've essentially made a new MIDI clip. Let's uh, make that a little bit bigger. Nope, that one. Repetition. All right, so uh, just, down. sorry, <laughs> give it a play. Just play, play the clip. Uh, it's right there. Right. Oh, sorry. There's so, uh, yeah, it's essentially playing empty. over and okay. over again. All right. So you have, you'll notice, I'll just point so everyone else can see. You got your uh, all your sounds here corresponding to all the sounds on your drum rack, right? Mm -hmm. Kick, da 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 da. So hi hat, is, tom shaker. This is all the all the separate samples you have, yeah, right? Yeah, corresponding here. to the key. Corresponding to the push, right? So. Um, oh yeah, I love that sound. How you how you start is just uh, start on the, the first note of the kick right down there, right at the bottom. And I just draw it in. No, you just, uh, oh, you, you can actually uh, draw it in if you hit B on your keyboard. B. 
and what right or left click? Uh, no, you just, it's in pencil mode. So that's uh, something, no, you just don't hold it. You okay. can turn, uh, you notice how the cursor is changing to a pencil? Oh, yeah. So now it's in pencil Indeed. mode or draw mode. So you can just draw that in. Oh. Cool. I'm going to delete some of those. That's too many. How do I undraw it? Oh, there. Right. You kind of get it. And then you got the kick directly oh, below. Oh, neat. Okay. So the kick is, I can't remember which you, one it you was. Can oh, there see it, it is. Right yeah, there. yeah. Okay. So I just literally. Yeah. No, that doesn't sound good at all. But, you know, this feels very not the way my brain works. But it's yeah. good to know you can do it. Do you need a click or do um, you need... No, it's... Uh, I think it's just because I'm used to actually playing instruments. Yeah. To me, this... I don't get the feel for it. Whereas if yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. playing it, I get a feel. But it's good to know you can do that. Yeah. Because I think if you came up with a beat yeah. and it wasn't quite right, it's so nice to know you can yeah. actually... Like, you can draw yeah. something and you missed or whatever. Yeah, so that's exactly. really good. That's a great tool. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but I think for myself, I would just play it in. And that's where this pushes. I, I, know, mm -hmm. I noticed some of the people were commenting saying they'd like us to focus on the push as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Which we should eventually. Um, Such a powerful tool. Yeah. Um, so you'd like to kind of play something. So I'm going to delete these. Yep. And I'm actually just going to familiarize myself with where things are on here. And I'm just going to... We did this yesterday. Ooh. Oh no. That's kind of lame, but that's I did a it. perfect. Yeah. Hit that capture. The it looks like a little film camera up there. This one. Yeah. <laughs> so I got. So you notice that it, it recorded a bunch of things uh, before, before got, you played. Yeah. Um, and this is it's. it's all listening i know that's listening, that's pretty cool which is pretty cool so you want yeah. to uh shorten that midi clip and i can see that this is the cool this is where this is started. the cool part so that you played the b off we exactly be it and then you see that where that color is that's the yes. that's so i drag no. this thing yeah exactly drag it looks like a over to here to five, to five. yes okay let's let's and then we press play give on it a, give it a play here yeah it needs to be quantized because i kind of did it sort of not that well right. yeah but that's good okay i'm cool. gonna be uh stopping as we're talking yeah um i'm not rushing i'm just in order for people to I, hear what we're I'm saying i'm down I'm all, so uh great. yeah what you can do is uh so something interesting with uh quantization mm -hmm. is i'll just kind of show you i'm going to go up here and just mm -hmm. like how we zoom in mm -hmm. there's a little magnifying glass yep i'll just zoom in Oh yeah, that's nice. Like so. And uh, a cool thing about uh, quantization. Mm -hmm. So say if we only wanted to quantize the kick and the snare, mm -hmm. what we can actually do. Maybe we should talk about what quantization yeah. is for people that don't know. Yeah. I happen to know what that is. What is it? Okay, so quantization is basically making your performance mathematically snap to a specific grid. Like say you want mm -hmm. it to be, well, you choose whatever um, time signature you want it to be in and whatever yep. tempo it is. And But then when you're playing it, like I played it on this pad mm -hmm. and I was a little, like I kind of was a little bit yep. early, a little bit I'll late. I'll actually show people. You can see it on there where I like started a little, a little late, late. A little late. But I will say that actually I was watching um, a video with Brian Eno a couple nights ago mm -hmm. and, you know, he... He's an amazing electronic music producer. If people don't know who he is, most people will. Um, but he has this whole uh, technique of making drums sound more human. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you you know, quantizing is something that, depending on the effect you want to achieve, yeah. you don't necessarily want to yeah. fix every little exactly. mistake. So I'm that's gonna, why you can do a percentage, yeah. right? Yeah, that's why you can do a percentage. And also, even if it's like directly like right on point. Yeah. I'm not going to explain this in this video, but yeah. it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> and it's grooves, Ooh. how you can humanize. Oh, yeah. And offset and add swing. 
I'm not going to get into that. Or quite you just yet. play it. Or <laughs> no, you just but yeah, play yeah, yeah. It. No, no, no. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. No, no, that's cool. There's so many options. One of the things I just want to say. One of the things that Brian Eno does mm -hmm. is he will, when he creates a beat, then he will go in after, mm -hmm. and he will make it so that every so often you hit a different drum than the one you were intending. That's one of his secrets to making it sound more human. Mm. Um, just thought I'd share it with you guys because mm. I'm definitely going to try that. Yeah. But because uh, so that, you know, when you make a beat and you're yeah. listening to it and every single one is always hitting the exact same drum at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The ear gets yeah. a little tired with that. Yeah. So anyway. So there's a, a situation. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do some uh, MIDI clip um, hygiene. Okay. So you notice that, you know, Capture is really cool, and Capture listens to everything. It listens yes. for, like, hours and hours. It's amazing. So, like, you can just... And the reason why mm -hmm. is because this has happened to me, how you, like, you, you play something, mm -hmm. like a cool chord progression, mm -hmm. and you say, oh, that was cool. Let me try to, like, record it. Mm. And then it's gone. And then it's gone. Because the, the the initial inspiration is often better than it's, when uh, you try uh, to redo it. So it's right. an amazing... That is an amazing tool. Yeah. So you have... <clears throat> excuse me. You have all of this junk essentially mm -hmm. right so what you can do is you can click on the clip go ahead is this the clip here the one yeah right click on that all right click and, and then, then go crop clip it's like uh right there. i see it yeah uh, what that does is that whatever gets rid before. of everything that's not in the loop point great so it's good and it's safe hygiene. good hygiene yeah. and that's so important because so, oh you end up using yeah. way too much space if you don't do that mm -hmm. right yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no, it's not so much space. It's just like, what am I looking at? You know what I mean? It's all about, yeah. like production is about getting rid of stuff. So you're like, you so just out, I do you do that I every rid, time? Yeah, I get rid of stuff. You're really, yeah. And this is like a vocal, good. then I kind of keep all yeah. of them. Yeah. Because you never know. And it's just good practice. But with things like this yeah. beat, I mean, I was just trying things out. No, yeah, that makes no, sense. That's, a, that's a cool beat. So how quantization works okay. is it will... Uh, when nothing is selected, mm -hmm. right? So, for example, one note is selected, mm -hmm. right? If we hit quantize, it'll only quantize that note. So, for example, mm. if you only wanted to quantize the uh, the shakers, which can, are up here. Can you select just you the shakers? Ju you just oh, select, you select just them. the shakers. Or can you go over and just click that? No, no. no you can't. Okay. Unfortunately, no. That's okay. Uh, and you right-click quantize. Yeah, we did this a little bit yeah, yesterday. So. But yeah, you should quantize, let me do it. it's a bit more deep. So you actually, uh, yeah, quantize, you quantize settings. Uh, so you got to oh, make no. sure what you're... Maybe right click? Do I cl right click? No, no, or it just... quantized. Trust me. It oh, did. it did? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll Oh, don't you, don't you get to choose the percentage yeah. of yeah, quantization? Yeah. So um, there's two... Uh, so I'll let you select uh, what you want to quantize, the shaker noise. So. Um, sure, let's, let's do that. Let's select... That. Select that, and okay. then just right-click on one of them, and then go quantize settings, and this will be like oh. the amount. Do you want just the the end or the the start or the end? And it's set to current grid, whatever the current oh. grid is, and the current grid is uh, currently sixteen. Am I going too fast? No, that's okay. okay. Yeah, okay. no, I I get it. So the start a... of the note or the end of the note, and yeah. or the both. Or both. Which makes notes kind of longer, depending um, on... Um, I think I'm going to just try start. Yeah. But what would you do? What I, would do, do I would do start because it's just... It's That's a, one that... Start, yeah. It's a triggered sample. So then uh, we have it at 73%. Let's just leave it there. Okay. Yeah. Why not? You and just okay. go, okay. And there you go. So All right, let's listen to it then. Yeah. I want to hear what it sounds like. Obviously, there's other parts that need to be quantized. Yeah. But... Oh, it's better already. But that was this, this one right here, the snare. Yep, so Definitely. what Let's you do can do, snare. hold on, hold on. No, nope, oh, you're not okay. going to do that. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, deselect that. And what you want to do okay. is just grab that snare. Uh-huh. Grab the snare. That's the problem snare. And then just oh. drag it over. Boom. It snaps. Did it? Yeah, yeah it, it did. did. So you can actually just move them by you can hand. Actually so that's another way to do it. And tune them. Oh, that's so great. So it's actually, yeah. this is a great thing that you're showing me the this, different options. This is MIDI. And I'm going to move this kit because that one was bothering me too. Okay, sure. let's hear it now. I'm going to play it. This was great. Yeah, it sounds solid now. I like it. It's great. Yep. Great. So Fun. Yeah, what I'd like you to do is, if you want, mm -hmm. you can add uh, another kick right at the end. So it's like boom, chick, 
bang, boom, boom. Yeah, right? I'd like that. So, uh, yeah, I know exactly where you need to put the kick. Okay, so where do I put it? Uh, you're going to want to make a kick right there. Okay, let me do it. I'll grab. So you just... Uh, nope. Do I just draw it in? You can just double click. Oopsies. No, that's not what I want. You can double click. There oh, you go. Okay. Or you can press B and you can draw it in. But Okay. You, Right, so check okay, that out. Plus this? Yeah. So I'm pressing play on the Pressing push. play. Because this right here, it's... Yeah. This one's a little ahead. I yep. think I need to fix that. Hold on. It's a little bit... There, you go. there okay. Oh. Yeah. I didn't really like where this was placed. No. I think I want to put it here. Let's try there that. And I also want to speed up this beat a little bit. Yeah. I preferred it like that for whatever uh, so reason. So your uh, your tap your tempo is up at the up at the top there where it says seventy. It's okay, currently seventy. Okay, we're gonna put it up to ninety three. No, oh my god, that's too fast. Yeah. Let's just bring it to like seventy. Funny how money changes situation. People can't hear you. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, there's okay, we got basic drums. Boom. Drums. A you drum just, pattern. You just stopped my rap. I was going to rap. Yeah. But that's okay. I can rap. I'm the only one who's <laughs> allowed like to rap here. No rapping unless it's you. All right. And so. Bubbles. Let's get that going on here. So would you like to do a bass? Yeah. And I can show you the... I'm not going to overwhelm, just no, no. basic bass. Let me see if I can find it because we did a bit of this I would yesterday. recommend Wavetable. Just go to Instruments. I wanna, we're going to make one from scratch. I'm oh, going to help you. Oh, sweet. And then Wavetable. Wavetable is new, very flexible, drag and drop it. So we're so just to review, mm -hmm. we are going to build a bass from scratch. And this will give you an opportunity to show me how to do yeah. some synthesis, which it's, is what we wanted to it's do. It's going to be... Very basic. Excellent. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw diagrams. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna be okay. 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 So. <clears throat> so this down here is wavetable. That is wavetable. Okay. Yes, that is a basic version of wavetable. Do you recognize anything in there? Ooh. Um. Interesting. Well, I I do. Um. I see that you've got res frequency frequency res down here yeah that is the filter section i'm actually going to draw this out for you <clears throat> so um, I, uh, I like this uh piece of software here so you have three sections three okay. major sections of wavetable and i'm not going to get super into it which you know i can yeah but you have the this section right here uh -huh. is the oscillator section. Okay. Right. This section right here. Hold on. Just wait. Yeah. I want to ask about the oscillator. Okay. Is the oscillator section where you choose between saw, square, yes. and... So you choose your wave. You cha Yeah, you choose your wave. You choose your wave. And yeah. can you blend them in that or just only pick one? You can... Because uh, there's two oscillators, so you can pick Yeah. one on one and one on the other, or... Yeah, this is... <clears throat> this is a, a wavetable synth. Mm -hmm. So, the basic uh, wavetable would be uh, one oscillator that looks like something, mm -hmm. imagine something, and another oscillator that looks like something, and then you have the ability to interpolate between the two. What does interpolate mean? Uh, they kind of morph into one another. Right, so it's like layers. It's almost like in Photoshop where you put yeah, different layers. Exactly. So the yeah. reason I ask is because, yeah. again, I was watching yeah. a Brian Eno video. Yeah. Anyway, they blend different yeah. waves. So but we're not going to be getting no, no, that's crazy fine. into that's wave, fine. wave tables. Um, but here, let me just... Okay. Uh, let me just... Hmm, how am I going to explain this? So it is... This is, this is, this is very basic when you, when you look at it. It's one oscillator going into the filter to be shaped. Okay. And then it's being output. What's the mod sources? What's that? What the mod that sources. Um, this is a way f for the any value or any like sound, be it like amplitude, to be affected over time. 
Okay, that's confusing I, to me. We're, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. We're gonna get there. We're Fine. gonna get there. No worries. We're gonna we'll start, start. We're gonna we'll start, start left to right. How okay. synths work? You start left to right. So if we hit a note. That's a basic. What is that, that a square wave? That is a sine wave. Sine wave. It's right here. Okay. Yeah, it sounded. It's very right. smooth. Yep. I'm yeah. going to sine load wave. in a teaching uh, material situation okay. here. This is uh, an EQ. Don't be afraid. It's just going to show us what we're seeing. Uh, the spectrum. Sure. Right? Yeah. So a sine wave is a mathematically pure tone. Okay. It's just, it's a sine wave. There's, there's no harmonics, right? Stop. There's no okay. harmonics at all. Okay. As we move up, we're oh. interpolating between. Oh. You're going sine towards, yeah. to triangle. Is which that has more sawtooth? No, uh, I'll show you what this is. Sawtooth right here. Triangle. There's another name for it. There's really? sign. Anyway, I'm forgetting. This is what? saw. Saw has the most harmonics. Saw is perfect for basses. Oh yeah. Now we could. All, can we bring down the octave? We're not doing that yet. Hold on. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, sure. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the bass. Because it cuts. It cuts through. If yep. it's if you it just has, have a sign, you it don't hear it. It has rich harmonics. Yes. Okay. A lot. I you'll notice. It. See all the harmonics in the EQ. Oh yeah. Can we All switch those... back to sign? I want to yeah, see yeah, if I can actually you. notice. Oh yeah, you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna switch. And then you just so drag I'll it down. Drag it down. Way down. That's that's. Uh... I'm checking out yeah. each one. Oh yeah. And then. Yeah, there's all these spikes yeah. of harmonics, okay? Yeah, cool. so it's very rich yeah. and it kind of cuts through. So like a guitar is like a mixture between, well, it... Depending on the guitar. It has, the guitars have like rich harmonics. So. Yeah. And these are basic um, oscillator shapes. Okay. Right. These are these are the basic ones. We'll stick with the basic ones for now. So yeah, we're gonna learn with a saw wave. So you got you got you get the the you grasp um, what a saw wave. Yes. It's e rich harmonics. It sounds like a yeah. Sounds like a saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like and cutting. It, and, it, and it actually looks like a saw as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's amazing. How it works is it then goes into a filter. Mm -hmm. And a filter is kind of like an EQ, uh, mm -hmm. but it just, it's just one filter. And you have high pass. Well, just, well, okay. I'm getting, I'm getting. You know what a low pass filter does, right? I do. Yeah. It cuts it, out all the low end. No, it cuts out all the high end. A low pass? No, that's low pass. I thought low pass was... It lets was... the low pass through. Oh, I have it backwards then. Because I thought low pass was cutting out. You know what? There's there's another one. Okay. It's like low right. pass and then high cut. Oh, low cut. Yeah, low maybe. Low cut. It's, we it's, better look this it's, up. It's, it's, you know, just... You don't need to know what they're called just it'd be good to know but they do but i do want to know what they do first and foremost yeah um so you have your frequency which is the cutoff frequency so if i oh i've seen this one yeah, we're doing eqs yeah. that's the yeah. same kind of it's thing. the same deal but it's a it's a filter within oh, the synth okay can i play it while i'm doing this and see yeah. what it sounds like yeah. oh cool and notice on the eq look at that how it wow. lets the it lets the high frequencies go through that's cool. So what you're doing right now is <gasps> it's called subtractive synthesis because oh. you have these rudimentary shapes. Yeah. And then you cut and shape the sound. Uh -huh. um, so this is a uh, low pass filter, which lets the low uh, end frequencies pass through. Mm -hmm. So you can get, it's oh. called, it's like a darker sound. It kind of colors it. And when you're playing in real time, yeah. One way to, because I, yeah, we've done this where mm -hmm. you're on the synth, like on the oh, virus, yeah. and you use that. that to kind of make the sound morph as you're playing it. It's one of the yeah. ways, yeah. But exactly. when you're actually building a sound, this is a different thing. It's cool. Yeah. 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 So that is a uh, low pass. There's, w why yeah. are there two side by side, and what is res? So um, there's two side by side because that gets into something more complex where you can use uh, two pairs of filters to shape the sound even more. So you have oh. a filter going into a filter that okay. is in series, it, or uh, you take the sound, you split it up, and then you have them both going into independent filters. 
and each filter is doing a different thing. It, when you split it up, are you saying you're panning it from one side or like? No, you're you're you're. It's it's splitting out. Um, right now, it's not set. We're just using one for the sake of. Is it because there's two oscillators that one will uh, you be can affected have, yeah, by the you other? You can have one oscillator being routed into. They can both be going into <laughs> separate filters. Okay. Which is valid. Or, so you're splitting yeah. up the sound and giving it different frequencies, yeah. and then it comes together. And then it comes together again. Okay. And okay. you can get some really gnarly sounds oh, doing yeah. that. What's res? What's res? So you'll notice if you look at the EQ8 here as I bring down mm -hmm. the frequency. Right? There's a cutoff. The res is the resonant peak of that cut. It'll boost where it's where it's cut off. I'll give you a visual representation oh. of what it kind of does. So on okay. EQ8, I'll just turn this on. Don't worry about this necessarily, but this is the same deal. It's a, mm -hmm. a low-pass filter. No, I'll turn this one back on. So this, right? Same deal, same filter made by the same yeah. guy. A very clever, uh, advanced, mastering grade EQ. But yeah, it's basically a filter. The Q is the how much it resonates at the cutoff can, point. Can I hear that, what it sounds yeah. like when you pull it up? So it sounds... Oh, I love that sound. Right? That is analog, and that's why, that's what brings all the boys oh, to the yard, is that so that great. resonance. So over here... It just instantly makes me think the of, same, of, of yeah. air, the band air. Yeah. But anyway. So uh, yeah, play around with the frequency and the resonance and let's just explore with that. Okay. So what do I press on here? You don't press anything. You just oh, you just play here. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I'm hold on. I'm playing with this one, right? Yep. Notice how it goes up. Oh. And then bring it up, and then bring the frequency down. Oh, that's so cool. Right. Wow, that's really fun. Yep. This is what synthesis is about. They can't all hear about. you if it's playing kind of stuff. Sorry, this is what synthesis this, this is, is all about. This is what synthesis is all about. This fun. is analog, basically yeah. analog synthesis. And yet it isn't analog. It's digital, but it's digital analog. Is it analog? It's... I can, I can get way into these filters if you're comfortable. Yeah. I can show you some, some uh, um, interesting, interesting things. Okay. If you'd like. Well, well, let's say that yeah. for another day. Because, another day? But this is really okay. very, so, very cool. There's, yeah, so, yeah, basic. Oh, I have a question. Feel, yeah. Got a question. Could I make the sound? I think you're peeking. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Would, I, would it be possible to make a sound that fluctuates as it plays? Yes. Because that's yes. what I'd want to do. Yes. I'd want to yes. make a sound that is We're gonna get into that moving and, gonna, and morphing yep. so that it's not... Yes. So that's not. That's the next step <laughs> Ooh, right there. That's exciting. Okay. How can you tell we like synths? <laughs> so let's let's recap. So oh. you have your Ableton push here. Okay. MIDI goes in, right? You can see the MIDI uh, data yeah. data collection point right that's there. That's in. Yeah. It triggers a simple saw wave. Yeah. Right, and yeah. then that is going into the filter, and then that's what we're hearing, right? Yeah. It's being shaped by the filter. Mm -hmm. So, um. Modulation. This is a whole next the, level. This wow. is this is this part. Okay. And uh, don't be alarmed. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm going to do something. Oh. Okay. So I, I've expanded wavetable. Mm -hmm. Boom. So there's more. To so what you the can see the from. modulation matrix has expanded out to here. So don't be alarmed. It's still the same deal. So it's just this little arrow right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and. We still have the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing going on. Um, but we should... Actually, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Okay. We'll get back to I got to be very careful with, with, with what's going on here. <laughs> okay, so you have, you have uh, the ability to modulate sounds. Mm -hmm. And we can modulate basically anything. Mm -hmm. So could I yeah. load any sound into this wavetable and no, module? No, 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 so no, it has no. to be a. It has to be. There's a, there's a bunch of different wave okay. wave shapes. These are okay. the basic basic. These are like Toys R Us training wheel shapes right now. I couldn't like record my voice and put it through this. And uh, it. That's a different. When thing. we get into Serum, yeah, you okay. can. Okay, um, but for this particular one, this particular one. But I wanted okay. to. I want to get into okay. envelopes. All right. Okay. Envelopes. So you know how like there's 
a, like a sustain on this this sound here. Yes. It, it fades out. Yes. That's because it is hardwired into the ampl the amplitude envelope, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the amp envelope, mm -hmm. right? So. Why There's, doesn't it say, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but why doesn't it say, oh, yes, it does, excuse yeah. me, I just see ENV. I thought, why yeah. doesn't it say envelope, but it does, yeah. right right next yeah. to it. So right. keep going. That's envelope two yeah. and three. Yeah, I got the, it. These are, these are programmable for anything else, okay. really. Amplitude it. is directly <clears throat> related to amplitude okay. uh, or volume. Volume. So just imagine um, when you hit a note, mm -hmm. this kind of like the audio level snaps up to this one from here mm -hmm. to here right mm -hmm. so if we adjust the the uh the attack mm -hmm. right a d s r this could be really really tricky to explain attack What's decay the, decay sustain uh-huh and then release oh. so the attack if we move this over just drag it and move it over it'll have a different you'll attack. notice yeah oh yeah it's it'll so rise wow fun oh right. that's so cool so that would be for like a pad or something if you want like a snappy attack you just right there move it there okay right same for the release we can make the release shorter which is good for bass actually exact amundo cool right and then we have the so you notice that like the the the, the amplitude profile it sounds like how it kind of looks yes you understand yeah and this is for uh, amp uh volume of the mm. oscillator and if it wasn't for this then it would just kind of continue on and on forever we'll get into uh modular sense can i try bit. shortening it so that it just is a lot sh oopsies i want to see oh that's as short yeah. as it'll be you that's want okay. the you want to shorten i just wanted to see what it sounds like if it's really short look at pizzicato you want to bring that down there oh yeah yeah i mean that's not what we need but it's yeah. good to know you can do it it's good to know you can do that so yeah. for like a pad for example you'd have a, a longer attack longer or yeah how did you learn did you did you ever so this is just a pause for a sec to ask you yep. about your experience so you obviously know a lot about synthesis and you know you know that a, a yeah. slower attack is 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 for a pad was that just through experience or did you actually study this stuff to understand um. Like what makes a good bass? No, what's, what what you, envelope profile makes a good bass? What envelope profile makes a good pad? That you, kind of stuff. You kind of you would go through. Okay, I started on a a, a, a VST mm -hmm. when I learned synthesis. I learned synthesis using a VST called Silent One. What is a VST? A VST is an external uh, synth. So it's an actual. It's hardware. No, no, no. It's an it's an external digital synth. That's made by a different company other than Ableton that will run inside Ableton. Like Wavetable, that's made by Ableton. VST. Everything we've been using. Oh, is a VST yeah. kind of like the push, only it's a synth and it's it's a controller? No. No, it's not. This oh. is a VST. So I'm going to go to my plugins. Okay. And I will load up. This is an aside. Apologies this is an aside. For, this I'm going to load up Serum. Serum is not made by Ableton. This is a separate window. Remember this oh, thing? Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Right? It's a separate... So this, that's a VST? This is a VST. Okay. And so a VST you, right. could be... Understood. Um, you, yeah. learned, you learned this within, in a program that functions with Ableton. Yeah. A, a very okay. uh, simple yet powerful. And what I did is I, I went through presets that mm -hmm. I liked and I yeah. studied what everything was kind of okay. doing. So it was through experience. Through yeah. experience, yeah. yeah. Neat. Yeah. All right. Well, so let's so get this, back to this. The this mod is, sources. There's two ways to modulate something. Okay. So here. in uh, in this section right here. Okay. I'm just going to get that snappy and move that there. Mm -hmm. So now. Right. So this envelope mm -hmm. is modulating the amplitude mm -hmm. of the oscillator, of the, the whole synth, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Do I got you? That is... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, I don't quite understand. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think I do. I just kind of... It's controlling this this line. These lines right yeah. here are... This is triggered every time I hit a note. Right. I'll give you, I'll give you a better a visual representation because Serum mm -hmm. 
as a visual representation mm -hmm. of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So this is Serum. This envelope one is the, ampl the amplifier envelope. So you can actually see it. Mm -hmm. As it's happening. And then I'll put the release so we can see it. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. And the attack, similar situation. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. I got it. I got it. I All right. got it. And that's uh, a yeah. visual representation of what's going on. Okay. So we have these envelopes which affect sound. And so, what, how do the, why do you, within that same sound, there's amp, envelope two, envelope three, LFO one, LFO two. Can yeah. you give, demonstrate yeah. how each of those affect the sound? Yeah. I will do that and I'll do that by expanding. Okay. Right. So amplifier, envelope two, three, um, LFO one and LFO two. So okay. how it works is let's say we want to modulate the frequency of the filter. Like how how are you, how do you describe what you wanted? Do you kind of wanted it to move over time? I wanted it to be okay. So one of the things when I I play electric guitar, yeah, a hollow body electric guitar, and yeah. one of my favorite um, aspects of playing that guitar is that I have pedals yeah. that um, that make the sound. They they they're kind of like basically envelope filters and, and all yeah. the stuff only it's for a, a pedal for the yeah. guitar and yeah. i love personally i love um vibrato um yeah and i like actually putting like you know this because we did yeah. this on on my record putting like two different um vi like different vibratos so that they're actually like going yeah. at the same time and sometimes we pan them from side to side okay yeah so i I guess to me that makes yeah. a sound sound more vital and more alive when mm -hmm. it sounds exactly the same yeah, exactly. every single time. Yeah. I don't like that yeah. as much. Sometimes I yeah. do. So I'm curious if you can create and build in to a sound a little bit of randomness, a little bit of unexpected, yeah, or something. Oh goodness, sorry yeah. about that. Oh, that's probably. Oh goodness. Hold on. Yeah. I just I'm expecting something and I have oh, to put yeah. that on. Um, so yeah, so that's that, kind of let's do that. That's uh, my I question. might not be able. We might not be able to make the sound that you're looking for. That's a, a you know what? completely it, separate thing. It doesn't matter. There are VSTs that yeah. emulate those guitar pedals. I'm more curious about what the process is yeah. to actually yeah. make a sound, and I don't yeah. know what the terminology for it is, but make a sound a synth sound that has some randomness built into the yeah. envelope. Yeah. And that's a thing you can do, right? Some randomness and maybe not randomness isn't the right word. Just um, that it isn't the same every single time. Yeah. And that it kind of totally like the filter uh, moves. Let's, as let's, it's, do, so that. let's do it. Okay, the filter cool. moves <clears throat> as it's playing. Each note okay. is playing. So that would right? be a bunch of different things uh, modulating. It's a bit complicated. Things. I hope this isn't boring for people. No. So there are. Two main ways to <clears throat> modulate things through envelopes, which mm -hmm. are triggered mm -hmm. like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they play kind of once, right? When you hit the note, when you hit the note, sharp right. cut off, sharp start, sharp cut off. Yeah, yeah. LFOs mm -hmm. are essentially oscillators, mm -hmm. low frequency oscillators. Um, and they kind of this, they're, they're two sine wave oscillators. So let's just hop into that okay and i don't want to freak you out but let's say i want to modulate the cutoff frequency of our filter kind mm -hmm. of like this yeah something like that right uh the we're getting into some complicated which is the modulation matrix so we'll look yeah. i just just yeah. pause for one yeah. second time yeah. out okay um if this is too complicated for this particular session, no, it's not. Because we it's can like, we can like come back to this. I don't have to do it now. I we're just... like so close to <laughs> okay, actually okay. doing right, this. It's gonna it drive me I'll crazy. Just do it. So do we it. need to map <clears throat> the cutoff to the LFO. LFO one. Map the cutoff to the LFO. Yeah, and right. how you do that is through a modulation matrix. Okay. Which is down here. Okay. Right. So I'm just going to wiggle the frequencies as it's happening. And then does it record what nope, you did? No. Nope, nope. 
Oh. I'll, I'll show you what's going okay. on. So I have the frequency uh, kind of selected. You'll notice that this right here, filter one frequency, is highlighted. Mm -hmm. Anything I play around with, it changes to. It's context sensitive. Right, filter frequency. I want to map that to LFO1. You notice how like LFO1's down here, mm -hmm. and then this row is filter mm -hmm. one frequency. Mm -hmm. I can do this and then increase the modulation depth amount. So now... Can you... Whoa. You can see the modulation depth amount right below LFO1. It's, so that's a bit extreme, but like yeah. say you brought it down yeah, to exactly. like, like just like yeah. that. Play much. around with it. That's even a lot. Let's just bring it down to like just a very small yeah. amount. Yeah, basically that's yeah, it. Stop. Wow, that's so okay. cool. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right, that so is, that's, that's it. It's Amazing. mapped to LFO So one. that's what the LFO yeah. does. And this was all part of it all an along. An LFO, a low frequency oscillator, huh. is an oscillator. That's not tied to any pitch tracking. But what wow. can you do with an oscillator is you can increase the rate. So the rate right now is at one hertz, which is one wow a second. Right? So we could definitely add, so like we, can we could make it like... Make it faster. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me so much of just different music I've heard. Like I'm, yeah. I'm getting, yeah, it's just yeah. so neat. It's so, I've always wondered, right. for those of you out there that are like me, I don't know if anyone else is out there that thinks, uh, you know, you hear, there's so much mm -hmm. synthesize, synthesizer music and yeah. in all kinds of, every genre pretty much, with, with mm -hmm. a few exceptions, obviously. Yeah. But you hear these sounds and I've just been wondering ever since I was a kid, how did they do that? And it's pretty fun to figure out yeah. how. It's, 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 it's very simple, fun. Yeah, it's simple yeah. in design and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's how we modulated the uh, the filter. Very cool. Um, I'm going to show very you cool. one more thing okay. in terms of modulation. Yeah. So the filter one frequency is in this row right here. Mm -hmm. Let's map that to uh, envelope two, right? Okay. Follow me. I'll increase that. What this does is this is just like the, the amplitude one. Mm -hmm but the filter is mapped to envelope two. So this is a little bit of playing around. What it'll do is the filter will be open and then close, depending mm -hmm. on the shape of the envelope. So let's bring this down to exaggerate it, right? I'm, I, 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 let me just see if yep. I understand. So I'm still a little confused yep. as to what envelope two does mm -hmm. versus, like I understand what LFOs do now. Yeah. Totally, I get it. They're yeah. basically affecting the sound of the, they're 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 modulating the sound yeah. of the original the tone. Mm -hmm. And I get the amplitude that makes sense to yeah. me. I'm still confused about the envelopes. I'm still the this the same uh, yeah. same uh, principle. The amp is an as an envelope that is dedicated Specific to, to am amplitude. Amplitude. Yeah. So, I, I, in other words, yeah. volume, let's, yeah. you know. Um, and then the envelope two is another layer of... It's just a, a one that you can map to anything else. To anything else. So what, yeah. what's an example of something else you could map envelope two to? Uh, pitch. Okay, let's try pitch. Okay, no, I get it now. So uh, it's, it's all the different So, yeah, elements. so pitch is now right. context sensitive. Okay. Right, you can see the pitch. It's okay. going down. Oh, this is so annoying, you guys. I gotta turn my goddamn phone off. Okay. And I'm gonna have to leave in a minute, so we're gonna have to... Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is amazing, that's though. that's the pitch. Can we, can we pause and come back and do a part two? Because I have to actually go. Yeah, sure. But, oh my goodness. And my brain needs a little minute to, like, absorb. Absorb. So before I go, though, I'm gonna just see if I can review what you just said, yeah. what we went through today. We went through yeah. a lot, but just specifically on... Subtractive synthesis is what you call it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we started out and we selected um, one of the basic shapes. Yeah. We selected the saw wave because yeah. it has a bite to it, and we're making a bass sound. It's a lot of frequencies. A lot of frequencies versus the sine wave, which is more simple. Yeah. And then we went on to work with the amplitude filter. We did the we did the filter first. Oh, we did the filter first. Which yeah. one? Here. Sorry, I'm, I'll, I'm forgetting. I'll, I'll bring it back to where we yeah. were. So this is what we were looking at, right? Oh yeah. So yeah. Right. We did this That's first. That's the filter. We did this first, right? So, so we give did... it a wobble. Um... 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. So we went and we did, we worked with that and we picked, yeah. we picked yeah. uh, a filter, just basic filter. Then yeah. we went to the amplitude. Oh, go back to the triangle, open up the uh, wave table. Yep. Open up then the we went to this and we selected basically how the attack of, so how the note starts and how the note ends. Yeah, the and we chose and something attack. that released the attack and the release. Yeah. We chose something that was quite fast on either side because that sounds best for bass. Yeah. Then we started talking about how to actually create fluctuations in the sound within that sound. Yep. So we worked with an LFO and we made, you know, and this is all hypothetical because it didn't, yep. it, we didn't really make a sound we like. We were just making yeah. an example. We plot that in, we plot yeah, that in. The, the frequency of the filter to the LFO. And then we were just about to start with envelopes, which I think we'll come back to this. But yep. the envelope option that we have is like pitch. We, and we stopped at pitch. Oh, we'll, later one pitch, yeah. Uh, so we'll just, just pause to, here. Yeah. Oh, go on. Just yeah. to kind of visually see what the, yeah. the envelope is doing. But yeah, basically. This is really, Yeah. this is the most I've ever understood synthesis, like right this minute. <laughs> but I definitely have to, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very, very cool. Now, when you're working with an, a synthesizer like this virus, can you do everything you're basically doing in a uh, wavetable in the virus? Like when you're when you're doing... You can set up uh, like, like control wavetable with this? No, no, no. I'm oh. not talking about wavetable. Like separate. Like this is just a yeah. hard piece of gear. Say I yeah. have a synthesizer. Well, yeah. I have like several Korgs. Within my Korg, if I wanted to make mm -hmm. a sound... Yeah. And like affect it. Are there yep. options within that? Oh, there must be. Of course there are, right? They're they're depending on the synth. Different synth engines operate in a different way. So like the modulation matrix on the virus is like a menu diving. Okay. Um, so it's less. It's probably yeah, a lot harder. But the same yeah. principle is it's the Basic same principles. principle applies. Yeah. You work from left to right. Oscillators yeah. on the left. Yeah. Filter. Um, can we do a session a... one day where we specifically work with the virus or with the Korg and we can just actually go through how you create your own sounds on specific synths? Yeah, sure. That's, some, that's something I'd to. be interested in. Yeah. Anyway, so let's take a break and then we're going to come back and do another session, right? Yeah, sure. Yay. We My will... brain is filling up with stuff. Yeah, but you, uh, <laughs> we're getting there. Yeah. Oh, man. So I'll leave so the, great. I'll leave the kick and or the, the kit. Yeah, and the then we'll come back. Good. We'll redo. We'll redo the. We'll redo yeah. the base. And that'll be good for me to review. And then anyway. we'll review it. And then you'll have a do 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 and you'll do the base that yeah, way. Yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, that was super fun. Yeah. I hope people are getting something out of this. I hope I'm not going too far into tangents, but this is a real lesson. This is actually good, me uh, learning. So. Use case. It's yeah. all an act. She actually oh, she knows way I more wish, than anyone. I wish I did. It's all an act. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we'll see you. Uh, see you later, dudes. See you soon. Real soon. Steamed hams. All right. <laughs>